Welcome to Real Life 360. Man, today is Monday, and it could be the greatest day of your life. Your real life can be better than you ever dreamed of. I'm Amy Schaefer. Coming up, we have more with the interview from Dan Dupee. It's not too late for your teen. There's good news. And guess what? Moms are the bomb.com, and dads, we have such a critical part in shaping our children's life. But first, we're going to have music from Hannah Schaefer as she sings Beautiful Life. times would never end. Our seasons changed, I turned 15. He'd go to work and I'd go sing. And Daddy Tom began to shrink. So I'd replay the memories like when he twirled me around the kitchen floor telling What a beautiful life. What a beautiful life. We were underneath the starry night. Shooting stars flying across the sky. He held me close and whispered then. Till the very end, I wanna twirl you around the kitchen floor, telling you how I love you more, and you're beautiful without your makeup on. Singing lullabies before we sleep, though we both know that I can't sing with stolen kisses every single night. What a beautiful life! What a beautiful life! You know, it's because of you I love him so. You showed me what a man should be. So, how about one last dance with me? Oh, daddy, it's well. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm Sydney Grant for Good News 360, where we bring you stories showing how God is on the move. A woman's cancer was miraculously healed through the power of prayer at the Azusa Now Revival. Natasha Higgins battled cancer for nine years, but recently decided to stop treatments. Higgins experienced God's healing power after she met a woman named Nicole Jason who prayed for her at the revival. The next time Higgins went to the doctor, her results came back clean. Higgins wrote this on Facebook, glory to God for this. There's no way two rounds of treatment could take away this disease. Bono and a pastor released a new documentary on the Book of Psalms. The U2 frontman teamed up with Eugene Peterson, the translator behind the message version of the Bible. The duo collaborated to discuss their love and interpretation of the poetic scripture. Christian Post reports the documentary will be released through Fuller Theological Seminary's new media adventure, Fuller Studio. Bono and Peterson say they hope the documentary will inspire others to read Psalms and discover the power behind the words. 
And here's an FYI, a story for your inspiration. A teen carried his brother on his back for 111 miles across Michigan. Hunter Gandy and his nine-year-old brother, Brayden, made the trek to raise awareness about cerebral palsy. The brother stopped at seven schools and talked about Brayden's experience with the neurological disorder. The journey started at a high school and ended at Michigan State Capitol Building. Hunter wrote this on Instagram. He believes the walk is God's will and part of his plan. This was the third and final walk for the brothers. That's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. We love good news around here. Good news mm -hmm. is so refreshing to hear in this day and time that we live in. I'm here on Monday with Anna Fry. Hello. Nice to see you. Happy Monday. Nice to see you too. Happy Mother's Day yesterday Hello. to you. How was your Mother's Day? It was great. That's and nice. I said moms are the bomb.com and everyone was like, what does that mean? That means moms right. are awesome. Well, that's moms true. are powerful. Moms are world chasers, yes. changers and nation shakers. Amen. What we do as moms is so important, Anna. It's so true. Okay. We have so much influence yes. over our kids right. and our world tries to tell us otherwise. Yeah. And Moms, you have such a high calling. What you do yes. every day matters from changing diapers to cleaning yes. up around the house. It's building into lives that are going to go on to change the world. We're raising disciples. Right, and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're going through these every day. It seems monotonous. It yes. seems like, am I making a difference? And, you know, we're even talking later with Dan Dupee about oh, teenagers. Man. You know, yes. what I'm doing when they're younger matters. What I'm doing mm -hmm. in the elementary years matters. What That's I'm right. doing in the junior high years, it matters. So mm -hmm. we just pray that God strengthen us yes. really as, as men and women of God to mm -hmm. raise mighty powerful kids. Right, yeah, today is such a good show for parents, moms and dads yeah. to um, learn and get encouraged about raising our teens. Like I Did know you? we both have yeah. kids. Um, I have one almost a teenager in yeah. July and you have one. I am right in the middle yes. of it and Dan Dupee's all in my business <laughs> right now and it's awesome. Well, you know, uh, Today is Motivational Monday. What we want you to do is go to our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, and then we want you to share this Motivational Monday. Here it is 20 years from now. You will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bowline, sail away from the harbor, catch the trade winds in your sail, explore and dream and discover. And we all say amen. And that's by H. Jackson Brown. Isn't that true? Uh -huh. It's very true. I love it. The adventure starts outside of our comfort zone. For So for those of you who are at home that are just feeling really comfortable who, or who are thinking like, I just really need to experience God in his presence. Amy and I want to encourage you to step outside of that yes. comfort zone. And that's really where we're going to find our dreams Explore, and discover dream. God. You know, my mom and dad used to say, the sky is the limit. Yeah. You can do whatever God has called you and asked you to do. Mm -hmm. There are no limits on your life except for that which you put on oh, your life. Man. You mm -hmm. are the, the lid in your life. So like right. open up and let God, mm -hmm. because what does the scripture say? God wants to do exceedingly abundantly mm -hmm. above all you could ever ask or think. Right. He really wants to blow the roof off of your life. Yeah, I mean, just sit for a second and let that sink in. Right. It's amazing to think what God can do. Did, did you ever have a little thought and a little dream, a little idea, and then your mind talks you out of it? Oh, because fear is right there. Like exactly. as soon as God is calling you to do something, then fear is following right after. And that's why we have to learn how to battle fear because that's, right. that's from the enemy. When fear knocks, faith answers. And just like mm -hmm. the scripture that Jay quoted in real life, that that perfect love casts out all fear. We do not want you to live a fearful life or anything that's going to hold you back. Will you give us a call at 888-665-4483? Our prayer partners are waiting to hear from you. And coming up, we have more from Dan Dupee. It's not too late. The essential part that you play in shaping your teen's faith. It's no big deal. We'll be right back. 
Hey ladies, I have some great news for you. The women of the Cornerstone team have joined together to make a special journal just for you. It's the Cornerstone Take 10 Journal. It's a 21-day prayer journal designed to help us all grow as women of God. Each day begins with 10 minutes of inspiration, life coaching, encouragement, and journal time. May Partners, call today with your gift to the ministry for this brand new devotional written by the women of Cornerstone for the women in your life. We will find out in the end at the gates of so true. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Sometimes you've got to take what we say in Oklahoma, the bull by the horns, and you've got to draw near to him because he's a loving father that wants to have a real relationship with you. And that's what makes your real life amazing. Yep, that's right. All right. Well, author Dan Dupee joins us to share more about his new book, It's Not Too Late the essential part you play in shaping your teen's faith. So Dan, welcome to Real Life 360. Oh, I can't you, wait to dig more into this. Okay, so you say in your book, we subconsciously behave in ways that reinforce our belief system. And there are seven myths or worn out ways of thinking and acting that pertain to raising our kids. And the number one myth is parents are peripheral in the lives of emerging adults. Yeah. Can you speak on that? Yes, it's a myth that has, most myths have some basis and some kind of truth. And the truth is, during the adolescent years, there's a lot going on. Our right. kids are learning to live on their own. Mm -hmm. The culture, though, perpetuates that we're irrelevant. Right. And that the best way of describing that, I think, is from a book that was titled, Get Out of My Life, But First Could You Take Me and Cheryl to the Mall? You know, that book, <laughs> yeah, that book sort of summarizes, <laughs> and that great? Yeah, that summarizes the experience we have, yeah. right? This is, this is what it's like uh -huh. oftentimes to parent a teenager, and we get yeah. these signals from our kids that, mm -hmm. you know, the eye roll, the sigh, hey, yeah. back off. Uh -huh. But the research yeah. doesn't support the idea that we're irrelevant. The best research suggests that teens really care about and need the involvement of their parents in their lives still. Okay. And of course, Scripture mm. describes that in Deuteronomy 6, mm. talking about us teaching our kids when we sit in our house, when we walk by the way, when we lie yes. down, when we rise. Yes. In other words, we're to have influence in the normal course of everyday life mm -hmm. with teenagers as well as with younger kids. Right. Right. What about that, that sort of myth that they have to go and sow their oats? Oh, yeah. Kind of like they, oh, they're going to have a season where they're bad and they go away from the faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is it possible that they can actually stay with the faith and in the faith? A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of us have had the experience of, of sowing wild oats. I mean, mm -hmm. Billy and Ruth Graham's son did that. Well, let's talk about yours. What yeah. did you do? Well, in our, I know my... <laughs> I, I, I oh, oh, boy. Now we're getting a little personal. <laughs> but the point, the point, this myth actually was pointed out to me by a Nigerian college student. And this is what he said. Help me understand why American college students feel compelled to behave recklessly. And his point was there seems to be something in our the sort of mythology of what it means to be a college student right. that, you know, we have to emulate Animal House, that kids have to <laughs> kind of go crazy. Right. And the point is that that doesn't need to be that way. True, true. Yeah. Okay, another myth. I've got a good kid. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Well, that, that one's, this is a tough one because this is a case where you have a child who externally shows many of the things we'd want our kids to show. They're responsible, they're a good student, right. they treat people well, and yet there's no light inside them. There's Jesus has not got a hold of their hearts. Mm -hmm. They're living a good life, but they're living it independently of God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a tough one, and I've seen many parents begin to feel like, well, gee, maybe that's okay, because you get a lot of affirmation when yeah, your child right. is like that. Sure. 
And, Very true. And, and so when they're going into their college years, what can we do as parents to influence them yeah. to stay with to stay with the faith, to not go crazy? What what can we do to help guide them? Yeah. Well, I think recognizing that when we have adolescents, we don't have control in the same way we did with younger kids. Wow. That we need to think about how to parent from a place of influence. Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, what that means is we want to have conversations where instead of giving directives, you know, do this, do that, we ask questions. Yeah. A lady That's... just told me that exact same thing. Is that right? To ask your teenager questions. So mm -hmm. they're a part of the decision making. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. Acknowledging that this relationship is changing. Mm -hmm. You're growing into more of a person who can have a conversation about why we do something and not just the fact that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so you work with college students pretty much exclusively. What stories of hope, like what do you see on a regular basis as far as college kids and their faith? Oh yeah, we, we get to see students open to faith in a ways that would surprise you. I mean, kids that come to school really as self-declared atheists who meet God in the context of being on campus. Students who grow up in Christian homes. There's a young man at, at IUP yeah. near here. That's my alma mater. There we go. <laughs> well, this, this uh, uh, Tyler Campbell, you know, he's someone who came to school that wasn't necessarily standing on his own two feet faith-wise. Yeah. But in the, in, the, in the process of being in school and getting connected, and that's a big, important idea, getting connected, connected. to Christian fellowship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's walking with the Lord, and he's got an internship at, at a company out in California this summer. Part of the reason he got the job is he shared his faith during his interview, wow. which you would think, well, wow. they're not going to hire this guy. They did. Right. But it's an example of somebody really stepping into their faith mm -hmm. during college. Mm -hmm. it happens a lot. So you have good news for parents that are releasing their kids into the college years. You, yes. You're, it's like a message of hope. It mm -hmm. really is. Really? Yeah, I mean, I is. think that parents need to hear this. Like, your child mm -hmm. can make it through the college years because we hear crazy stories, we Dan. Do. We mm -hmm. do. And I think the sort of teeing it up, Amy, mm -hmm. as, we, as our kids approach college, I coach parents that there's one conversation you really need to have before your kids leave home. And the conversation is very simply, there are two things that I would really like to see you do during college. Okay. And, and, and I know that it's I your... Need to take notes. Yeah, I know. This is the, Let me get my pen it is, it is in the book. So that's... Uh, yeah, Good. but it's oh. acknowledging oh, yeah. that, that, acknowledging that you know, it's going to be you. If you're the college student, mm -hmm. you're the one who's going to decide. I just want to. I just want to tell you what my request is, mm. and it's that first of all, you find fellowship on campus. It can be a Bible study on your dorm floor. It can be something else. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that you become part of the life of a church. Yes. And, right. And those are. And then I say at the end, it's going to be your decision, but I will ask you when I see you. Yeah, so you're saying parents are allowed to talk about their wishes as yeah. far as religion, as far as faith goes to their kids. Like, it, that's well, exactly. okay. Oh, good. Yeah. We can give yeah. our opinions. You, Yay. We, well, and, the, and I think the key there is you just don't give 100 opinions. You right. don't give. I love that you pick two. Oh. Yeah, yeah, pick two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, limit the amount of advice you give. <laughs> scale it down to the things that are most important. But, it's right. in, but during these years, we got to keep showing up. And when we start really pulling our punches and not do, having those conversations, mm -hmm. we're not part of the family in the way that we, we need to be for the sake of our kids. That's right. You're saying not to say much, but we're women. We already I talk 10,000 <laughs> times uh, it, more than right. you do. You use it's more words. It's man to say, <laughs> oh, just pick two simple thoughts. Well, we've got a million simple thoughts. Can you talk a little bit about quality time versus quantity time? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, the, the idea, of course, of quality time is that we pick particular moments of high impact with our kids, and we make sure we're there for those, and we don't worry about the rest. Mm -hmm. Kids don't relate to that at all. They relate to us spending as much time with them as we possibly can. That's yeah. their love language. For little kids, they want to be with us. Right. So it's what I call the just say yes principle. Every mm -hmm. time they ask you to do something, before you can think about whether or not you'll want to do it, right. just say yes. yes. 
with teens, you have to find more things to do that they're interested in, mm -hmm. and you have to persist. Yeah, give, give some examples of how you can connect with your teenager who doesn't necessarily want to yeah. spend a lot of time. Real life example, I have a daughter who loves art. She's studying to be an art teacher. Mm -hmm. So for me, suggesting that we go, let's go to the, the art museum. Let's spend okay. some time, you know, let's go down there. Let's, right. she likes being outdoors, let's go for a hike. Let's paddle a kayak. For my birthday, this is a very practical suggestion, I specifically ask for experiences I could have with my kids mm -hmm. as, as gifts. So oh, just give awesome. me a coupon to spend time oh, with you. Right, right. And, and the thing with teens is you have to be persistent. Yes. Be prepared to hear a lot of no's before you get a yes, but don't, don't quit. That's wise. Because even, even if you don't get as much time with them as you'd like to, mm -hmm. they know that you're interested in them. Right. They know that you love them and you're crazy about them and you want to be around them. And eventually they will, it took, a couple years with one of our girls to keep asking and asking and asking and now every time she's home dad can we go to breakfast wow. dad let's go on a hike awesome. you know it's so you got to find stuff on their territory right dan in about 20 seconds can you tell us the importance of the friends that the teens should have or be searching yeah. for because how important are friends in their life friends are critical mm -hmm. And so it's not a question of whether or not they'll be influenced by peers, but which peers they'll be influenced by. Right. So learning to make good choices of friends is the job during the teenage years because when they get to college or beyond the teenage years, those friendships will stick for life. And do parents have anything to say about friendships with teens? Absolutely. Friendships help, help guard the border, yeah. give feedback about the influence, mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, parents have to intervene rather forcefully if you see a kid going down the wrong path. Wow. That's Lots of wisdom. Yes. Thank you so much, Dan, for well, coming. Welcome. It is not too late with your teen. It's good news. Hey, Jay will be joining with us in just a few moments to discuss all of the God moments from today. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray for your teens, too. We will be right back. You know, back when my husband and I first started dating, we used to go on all sorts of crazy dates just trying to find something entertaining to do. But then we realized we really just wanted to be with each other at home and that that was far more entertaining. And a lot of that has to do with Cornerstone. Cornerstone has good, wholesome family entertainment that not only entertains, but it uplifts and enriches. We've come to enjoy our date night with Cornerstone. We love investing time in our family, and we are so glad that Cornerstone is always there to be that source of, of inspiration and entertainment for us and our kids with great movies and great programs that touch the heart and inspire the mind. Hurry up, Jim. The movie's about to start. Well, that's some great insight today, and we had a wonderful time here with Dan Dupee. And I tell you what, I don't know about y'all, but I'm so encouraged, and I know that it's time to minister to yes. some people out there today. Yes. Yeah, I just Amen. think of all of the the parents and that are, and even grandparents that are heavy burdened with what their teens are going through right now. There's everybody is pulling for our kids, the media, the movies, the music, right. the world is pulling at our kids, but yet he's given us a message of hope that it's mm -hmm. not too late for our teens. Yeah, I can say personally, this book is just comes with perfect timing because yeah. with my kids, quickly going into the teen years, I'm having that sense of feeling overwhelmed. And so if you're feeling that way, like it's normal, mm -hmm. it's okay. And it's so helpful to have this book and be encouraged and have that hope. And mm -hmm. if you need 
that hope today. If you need somebody to, to connect with you and pray, you can call us right here, 888-665-4483. Our prayer partners are here to pray with you about your team. And we're going to do that too. And it's a phenomenal book because one of the things, I have a seven-month-old and a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I'm getting my hands on this now mm -hmm. so I can get these practical principles in our lives and establish, you know, one of the things I think that he said was so great is about the importance of establishing the culture in your home. Yep. I cannot express it enough. The reason why I'm where I'm at today is because I had yep. a parent yep. and parents mm -hmm. that set the tone in the home. Yes. So parents out there, I want to encourage you today. It is so vital that you set the tone in your home. I remember waking up in the morning and my dad would pray at 5.30 in the morning and I would sense the presence of God and we would read the Bible. And you know, one of the things also that I think that was phenomenal is that he said the importance of being confrontational yes. with your kids. Right, mm. and dealing with conflict in your home because guess what? They're gonna leave your home and they're gonna go out and they're gonna have to deal with conflict and they're gonna have to know how to do it God's way. And I love the idea too of being grateful. And when our kids yeah. are grateful, they're grateful for their parents, they're grateful for those in authority. They're grateful for what Jesus has done in their life. It's a really good book and you can pick it up oh, at yeah. our website at ctvn.org. There is a book link there. So you're really going to want to get that into your hands. Right. Now, before we pray, I've got an awesome praise report that I feel All we right. need to share here. Yeah. Gloria called in and she could not walk. After praying with our prayer partners, she was up and walking around and she thanks CTVN wow. for being there every day. And she's singing praises to God yeah. for the great things that he has oh, done. That is Gloria. Great. Isn't that awesome? awesome? And we, I love the name Gloria, by the way. Yeah. That's my daughter's name. Uh -huh. Why don't we take a moment and read through a couple of these and then let's pray over our teens and over these prayer yeah. requests. Yeah, let's do. Jerry called in. He is separated from his wife and he is praying for reconciliation, which we know that God is a God of restoration and healing for their marriage. And he wants to be the man of God that God has intended him Ooh, to be. So amen. you can do amen. it. That's amen. right. Okay, Lee called in. Lee needs a prayer, um, help to pay only as a woman to pay her bills, especially with her storage bill, um, $200 she's believing God for. Amen. He is our provider. Yes. Amen. We have Paul here. His son has an addiction to heroin and he's so worried for him. But guess what, Paul? We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to believe God for a mighty breakthrough in your life. Let's put these Amen. together and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for the power of prayer. Yes. We thank you that not only do you hear but that you send an answer right away. And so Lord, we pray for every teen. We pray for every child that's wayward. And we thank you today for bringing a supernatural yes. change in all of their lives. Yes. We pray that you would anoint parents to rise up yes. and be the parents that you the called team. them to be, Father God. We thank you for touching our college students. And Lord, we thank you for touching Amen. Paul. We thank you for touching each and every person right now. And Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory for doing miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for joining in with us today. And we're so glad that you're our partners. Stay tuned. There'll be more coming up right after this. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.